Hey everybody, Poppy Dennison here tonight with Jacob Flores, Pam Singer, and Skylar Cates. And we are going to be talking about writing, and books, and life, and anything else that we can come up with. So I'm going to give these authors a chance to say hello to everybody, and then I've got some fun questions for them. So Jacob, you want to start? Hey everyone, like Poppy said, I am Jacob Z. Flores, and I'm thrilled to be here with these fine ladies. Pam, you want to go ahead? Um, you know me as PD Singer, and you know me mostly for books with mountains in the title, but I do branch out. And um, I'm here to say hi to everybody. And yes, PD. I will try to call you PD instead of Pam. It's just gotten to be a habit, I think, to call you that. So PD Singer, everybody. So, And Skylar. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you got to introduce yourself. Oh, sorry. Skylar Cates. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Glad to be here. Okay, so I wanted to get this started by asking guys a couple questions about the writing process. I know that it's one of those things that everybody's process seems to be really unique, and a lot of readers and other authors who are watching are really curious about what the writing process is. First thing I want to ask you is, are you a plotter or a pantser? So for the people who don't know what that is, a plotter is someone who plans out their book, they outline, they know what's going to happen in advance before they sit down to write. And a pantser just sits down and the story just happens and they have no plan, it just comes out and there it is. So, um, PD, are you a plotter or a pantser? I'm definitely a plotter. I know where I'm going to start, I know the high points I need to hit along the way, and I know where I want to end up, but the journey does still surprise me. Good. Skylar, how about you? I'd say I'm also a plotter. I uh, definitely know the beginning and often know the end. It's the middle that sometimes surprises me. That's always the best part, right? Yeah. Jacob, how about you? Well, I used to be a plotter. Uh, the first four novels that I did, I knew from start to finish what, they, uh, what, what was going to happen in the books. And then I turned into a pantser. Um, I started writing one of my books and I just didn't feel like I wanted to do the outline, I just wanted to start writing for this particular book. And I started doing it and I haven't looked back since. I'm a complete pantser now. Who knows what will happen in another two or three books. Pantser, who knew, who knew that could happen? <laughs> so, um, one of the things that our readers are always really curious about is what, how we handle reviews. Um, and I think it's also another thing that really translates well to other authors. So, do you guys read to your reviews? Do you respond to them? Or do you have any advice on how to deal with bad reviews? Skylar, what do you think? I read some of them. Um, I think that you have to stay true to what you believe for your book and not let past reviews influence you too much. But I think it's also smart to have a sense of what people are critical of and try to work on that. So I kind of am in the middle of, I read some of them, I don't read all of them, it depends on the source sometimes and also on my state of mind <laughs> at the time. That makes sense. Jacob, how about you? Um, I definitely don't respond to reviews um, unless someone has made it a point to tag me on Twitter or Facebook saying I reviewed the book. Then I will reply and say you know, thank you for the for the review. Um, as far as reading them, I do admit I indulge in them every now and then just uh, to see how the book is doing. And so I read a few, and then you know, inevitably you get to a, someone who, who basically kicks you, and you're like, okay, yeah, I know why I don't do this anymore. Um, so I just read a couple, and I don't make it a habit and sit there and wait for new ones to come in. But that's basically all I do with them. That makes sense. Sam, how about you? Well, I have a trusted author friend who usually finds them first, and if she tells me about it, it's a good one, and if she doesn't, then I'll never know. <laughs> and perhaps I'm happier that way. <laughs> I think that's a great plan. I think we all need to steal that idea. Who do we know who can help us with that? So I'll do yours, Papa. You do mine. Deal. <laughs> so, okay, so I have a question for you about what kind of trouble you've been in in the past? Are, we, are there any troublemakers in the group and have you ever kind of gotten into a sticky situation? 
I mean, we all sort of make bad things happen to our characters, so has anything sort of bad like that happened to you that you've had to get yourself out of some trouble? So, who wants to take that one first? I'll let you guys just start on that one. Why do you think we have pen names? <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely, it protects the guilty. Yeah. So no, no, no troublemakers in in the group, huh? I can't think of anything that would. Be... I I think the statute of limitations has run out, but I'm still not going to tell you about it. Good, good answer. I'll I'll let you get away with that one. So, um, I I've had this like kick lately where I've been really into superhero movies. I think it has something to do with the fact that I have five nephews who, and that's all they want to watch. But I've been really curious about who people's favorite superheroes are, so I've been asking my friends randomly. So who is your favorite superhero and why? I'll um, go. Oh, there you go. Jacob, I'll let you go. Um, I don't think it's any surprise. Uh, my favorite superhero is Wonder Woman. <laughs> I knew your favorite. <laughs> Um, she's always been a favorite of mine when I was little. I used to twirl around in my bedroom trying to turn into Wonder Woman, you know. So I would make a fashion a lasso out of whatever I could and try and rope G.I. Joe and make him do what I wanted. <laughs> Some things never change. No. PD, <laughs> how about you? I'm sorry, was that to me? Yes. Oh, um, I'm actually quite partial to Aquaman. I'm. I remember the cartoons from Saturday mornings, and now that Jason Momoa is um, playing the title character, I am even more in love. You know, I, I don't think there's a better reason to be in love with Aquaman than that. I think that's a good one. Well, that and I always wanted to ride a seahorse. Then there's, you know, see, I like that. That's a great one. Skylar, how about you? I like the Aquaman thing too, but uh, I when is that movie coming out? By the way, <laughs> not soon good. enough. <laughs> um, I th I like still like Superman actually. Uh, my husband loves all superhero characters, so we watch everything. I'm trying to think. I like the Arrow lately because he's kind of brooding, but I don't understand why people don't recognize him in his hoodie. So that kind of makes me doubt him, but. Um, that, well, that's that super bad in his glasses, you know. I mean, really. I really like the X Men too a lot. I'm a big X Men fan, so. So, what do you guys consider to be your biggest accomplishment? Jacob, you go. I'll pick on you again. Okay. Um, my biggest accomplishment, I guess, is my daughter. Um, I really thrive on being with her and spending time with her and. As long as she is doing well and well adjusted and happy and smiling and still wants me to kiss her on the cheek when I drop her off and she's a freshman in high school, I think, I've, I think that's pretty darn good. So uh, as far as anything else, uh, come second to that. That's, that's wonderful. Skylar, how about you? Um, along with Jacob, my kids, treading the chaos of everyday life, I guess. Just, you know, having survived another day and the mayhem that is our household <laughs> these days. And um, just if my kids are happy, that's, that's enough. Absolutely. Didi, how about you? Well, this is not going to sound original after the other two, but um, I'm very proud that I have not only managed to raise a couple of boys to be very nice young men, okay, I'm biased, uh, but I've managed the day job and gotten some books written. <laughs> so um, I think my biggest accomplishment is I've learned to do without sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great accomplishment. That's wonderful. So I'm really curious about what your writing process is. How do, how do the books come to be when you're, you're tackling everyday jobs and you're tackling your families and your children and all these things? How does the writing happen for you? And kind of give us an idea about what that process is like for you. When... When do you write? How do you write? And anything you think of that might be kind of interesting. Skylar, we'll start with you this time. Okay. Um, I think I just get really obsessed with the story. I, I'm very bad at multitasking. When I'm into a story, I'll focus completely on that story. And, you know, it'll keep me up at night. I'll wake up and I'll think about it, or I'll always be processing things about it, even if I'm doing something else. 
And so when I have any free time, I just grab it. I'm not uh, somebody who writes, sits down and writes on a schedule, but I'm always thinking about the novel, and I'll, um, I'll just grab any moment I can. So my process is kind of haphazard, but it's also <laughs> obsessive, I guess, if that makes any sense. I hope so. It does, okay. absolutely. I think a lot of us have that first moment of waking up, and the book is the first thing on your mind. So, PD, how I about you? I wish I could multitask a little bit better, actually. Yeah. Well, um, I tend to start with either with a plot bunny that could either be a plot point or it could be a character with a particular characteristic, and I start thinking about how this characteristic would affect his life, and then I build a story around that. Either that or I start with a situation, and I have to imagine how some characters of you know, particular types would deal with that particular situation, and I will think about it, and I will spend a lot of time thinking before I actually open a file. But um, once I start writing, like I can say I'm, I'm linear girl. I start at the beginning and I write all of chapter one and then all of chapter two until I get to the end. And um, if I get hung up, it's usually because the plot has developed a glitch and I have to figure it out before I can go on. I can't just skip past it and keep going. Um, and this it's a good signal that I've taken a wrong turn. Um, but I, I do wake up thinking about the, the book and since I get up earlier than anybody else in the household, I usually have a little bit of peace and quiet before somebody needs something. That's, that's great. Jacob, how about you? Uh, you know, my process really just depends. Um, my muse is a persnickety little bitch, um, <laughs> and he doesn't really like to respond to um, what I want him to do. So usually it's a song that, that inspires him or uh, a suggestion from a friend like Terry uh, Michaels with my, my, newest, my latest release. Um, anything that really inspires him, then he gets going and I start ruminating about it and when I'm at the gym and I'm on the treadmill that's when it starts really coming together um, I start thinking about what the characters look like and, and who they are and once that idea comes into my head and the plot bunny starts humping all over the place then I sit down and I create my character sketches I find images that I think uh, who the characters look like I create their background and their history from birth all the way up to the point where the novel's going to start and once I've done that with my main characters, then I it's kind of kind of plotting a bit, but I create a book blurb, and so I know a general idea of what the book's about, and then I set them loose, and I go just like PD said from beginning to end. I don't skip all the way to the end, even if I know what's going to happen. I don't skip. I have to I have to ultimately get there, and I do get hung up. I will get hung up on a word. Um, if I, and I have to stop and, and, and until it comes to me, and then I will move on. So that's my process. Persnickety bitch, huh? That's gonna. I think that's gonna. We're gonna have to tweak that. Somebody's gonna need to tweak that. Jacob's needs a persnickety bitch. So we need to remember that one. So <laughs> um, one of the things that um, I'm often asked as a writer are the books that inspire me, and I found that the books that have inspired me most as a person or books that I read as a child. So I'm wondering if you guys had any childhood favorites in your books that really have still, that still, you know, have stuck with you all these years or um, just something that you would really want other kids to read, anything that's sort of inspired the writer that you've become, sort of that sort of, are there any books like that that are really special to you? Jacob, you want to tackle that one? Sure. Um, the book that I think, it wasn't when I was a child, um, but the book that really hit home to me was The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. Um, up until that point, I hadn't really read another novel by uh, a Hispanic, or a Latina, a Hispanic woman, Hispanic man. Um, and her voice I identified with because I, I grew up in the same background. Um, she was poor in Chicago, I was poor in San Antonio, she lived in the barrio, I lived in the barrio. And so it, it, when I read that book, it for the first time showed me that I could have a voice as well um, as she had and, and make it unique and make it my own and present who I really was to the world rather than all the other 
novels. Not that they weren't great or that I couldn't relate to them, but this one just hit me on such a personal level that um, it really inspired me as a writer. Mm. Edie, how about you? Well, I came to writing um, relatively late. I mean, I'm not one of these people who uh, wrote stories in crayon for the family pet. <laughs> um, I did. I wrote one horror story in high school, and then was everybody's audience until oh, not all that many years ago. And then I ran into. Um, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this. Anita Blake, Vampire Hunter. And here's this whole world of characters that I thought were not being utilized properly. And damn it, I was going to tell better stories about them. <laughs> so I wrote a lot of fan fiction. And um, that continued for a couple of years and taught me how to tell a story with a beginning and a middle and an end. Because here are all these great characters. And they needed stories. And I had to tell those stories because the canon author wasn't telling those stories. And until then, I was content to be everybody's audience. I love that. I love that. I, I will, we need to talk about the Anita Blake books because I'm right there with you. So, Skylar, <laughs> how about you? I don't think I have a particular book. I'm still thinking about Jacob's answer. I love the vignettes in The House on Mango Street. That was a great book. Um, I just read so many books as a child that uh, I just, I think my influence was my father because I used to listen to him typing stories at night and uh, he never did anything with them but I remember thinking that was really cool and that I wanted to do that. But as far as books, I read so many that I really treasured that I can't think of a particular one <laughs> right now. Well, and that's okay too because I think that when, when you do, when reading is part of your childhood, then... Um, it, that that speaks to that as well. I mean, just reading as a whole, um, yeah. I think it's an important skill to pass on. So, um, let me, I'm checking my list here. I got distracted by your answers and wasn't paying attention. So, do you have a book that you wish you had written? I'll let you guys ponder that one for a second. If anybody wants to jump in, is there a book that you wish that you had written? Um, I'll, I guess I'll start. Um, I don't really know if there is a book that I wish I would have written because it was the reason I liked it was because of the person's take on it um, and how that author created the characters and crafted the storyline. And I don't know if I would necessarily have approached it the same way. So I can't say that there is a book I wish I had written, um, but. Uh, just because I don't think it would have it would have come out the way that it did, yeah, it would not have impacted me the way that it did. Yeah. PD, how about you? I'll pick on you next. I'm not so sure that it's a book that I wish I had written, but I've read a few that have moved me so much that it's like I'm playing in a sandbox and here's somebody who's just sculpted the David in marble and. Why am I even trying? And it's like it's just that wonderful. Um, and every now and then I run across one of those books, and it kind of knocks me off my stride, and then I have to go read it again. That makes sense too, Skylar. How about you? Yeah, I'm with PD. Like every every damn day, pretty much, I read a book that I think is amazing, and I wish I had written. I mean. Everything uh, from the classics to you know, Crime and Punishment, or Madame Bovary, or I don't know, just everything. Gone Girl. I mean, lots of books I read, and I think, wow, that's really interesting. I wish I had thought of that, or I just admire their style. Um, but it doesn't depress me, actually. It makes me feel good. Like they're, we're all having this language, we're all having this communication, and that uh, it actually pumps me up to go back to my computer and write, even if my stuff is, as you said, the sandbox. You know, just makes me feel inspired sometimes to read these amazing words. So. Well, it does make you force something more from your own work because you see what somebody else has accomplished and you want to reach for it too. And of course you have to do it in your own particular way, but you know, giving, getting a goal is always good. Yes, I think so. I, you know, and I, I think that that's the best thing that we can do as writers is read. 
Um, and we hear that advice all the time. I think that um, you know that you can read, you know, work on this skill or don't use this voice or you know, active and passive. And we hear all of these things. And I think sometimes I've learned the the, the most things by reading other books and seeing the beautiful way someone else uses language and um, and that's really inspiring. So on that note, do you have any sort of writing advice that you would give to any aspiring authors? Gather, I'll pick on you first this okay. time. Okay. Um, get your butt in the chair. <laughs> you know, it's probably the first one. Don't make excuses. Just sit down and see what happens. That would be my main advice, I think. And uh, <laughs> I like editing and revising. I'm a big I'm big on that. You know, once you finish, I think it's nice to go back and critique what you have and not be afraid to um, be hard on yourself and improve it and be open to criticism at the early stages, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Early stages is when it's tough to be open to criticism though because you're you're fragile and you don't really separate yourself from your work um, as you do after you've done it for a while. Um, I would advise uh, starting writers to just get the whole first draft on the page and don't fiddle with it until you have the whole story and then look at what you've got and tweak it. But you can tweak the early parts to death and never get the ending written. <laughs> and it's not a story till you put an ending on it. Absolutely, that's great advice. Jacob, how about you? I would say that for uh, starting writers, I think it's important to have a goal. I think it's important to know what you want out of the book or the story that you're writing. Um, do you want it to? Do you want writing to be your career? Do you just want it to uh, this to be your hobby, something that you use to? Um, Express yourself. I mean, what you want to get out of your writing is very important, and setting those goals can help you achieve them. Like, um, like Skyler said, you know, you do have to get your butt in the chair, um, and you do have to have a thick skin, and you do have to be open to criticism. But you have to give yourself, you know, if I'm going to write 1,000 words a day because that fits in my life right now. Um, and that way you're not thinking about, oh my God, I have to write a book. You're thinking, I have to write a thousand words. And whether those thousand words are great or whether you're going to end up deleting them the next day, you're writing. And through the process of writing and getting it down, you're going to get better in your craft and you're going to achieve your goal as long as you set them for yourself. So I think one of the best things that I would recommend is to set those goals for yourself. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's wonderful. I think goals are very important. So I have one final question for you, and then I'm going to get you guys to tell us about your newest book. Um, going along with our Dream Spinner theme, where dreams come true, I would like to know, do you dream? And if you do, do you ever have any recurring dreams or nightmares? So anyone can tackle that one. Do you dream, and do you have recurring dreams and nightmares? I do. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, PD. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I have to sort this one out. Go ahead. Okay. Um, one of my recurring dreams that has happened ever since I was a child <laughs> is, God bless you. Thank okay. you. Um, I constantly dream about the alien from the alien movies. Okay. Um, I love that movie, and I'm weird. I would love to have that little alien as a pet because I think it's just so cool. Um, and a lot of my recurring nightmares are where I'm running away from it and it's getting close and it's about ready to kill me and I'm thinking, oh my god, this is so cool. Um, and, you know, because I know what to do. I've seen the movies. I know where you stop. I know what you don't do. I know you don't go into an air vent because that's stupid. <laughs> um, so, you know, I know all the little tricks and, and so forth, but that's always been one of the recurring dreams that I've had. I'm Ripley. <laughs> You're Ripley. That explains so much. Well, okay. Ripley was a kick-ass character. Yes, he was. Um, my recurring dream isn't um, that much fun. I have the um, I have to take a final in a class, and I haven't attended this class all semester. I didn't know I was enrolled in this class. 
Um, and that one has haunted me since um, freshman year. It was a while ago. And lately, and I've had this like three times this week, unfortunately, but it's evolving because I've actually stood up and told the professor, I'm not enrolled in this class. Forget you. I am not taking this exam. <laughs> and I feel like this is actually a really big um, personal evolution because I'm calling BS on the external factors that think they can control me. That's actually really powerful. We need somebody to analyze that dream. I think it, there's some deep meaning there. Skylar, how about you? Um, I think it's more like images that repeat than actual full dreams. But I know I've dreamed several times that my teeth have fallen out, and I've dreamed other times I'm flying, and you know I wake up with like you know your whole body jerking like you're about to fall, and that kind of dream. So more than like a recurring theme than just these little images. I know I've I've several times dreamed like like my teeth fell out or my eyes or can't see or something like that. That sounds nightmarish, but you know, yeah. But um, sometimes I just don't remember them at all, honestly, and I just sleep. Like you know, when I finally get to sleep, I'm just so happy. I I don't even know if I have a dream. I used to write them down, and when I found that when I wrote them down. I remembered them a lot more when I used to keep a dream journal, but now I haven't done that in years, but it did work. That's cool. That, that's actually a good idea. I've never done that. So, Okay, why don't you guys tell us about your newest book, and um, I will quit tormenting you with all of these random questions. Jacob, you want to go first? Sure. Um, my latest release is Please Remember Me. Um, it is a story about falling in love all over again. Um, it's about Hank and Santi, and they meet in San Diego, they fall in love, they have a whirlwind romance, and they are uh, on their way to getting married, and then there is an accident, and Hank gets amnesia. And so the story is uh, all about Santi persevering and trying to get Hank to hopefully remember their love and the pain and the heartbreak that goes along with trying, with having your best friend suddenly not remember you or recall you in his life, and everything that, that Santi does, does and the sacrifices he uh, goes through to hopefully win back Hank's heart. Aw, so please remember me. Yes. And that's out now, yes, Jacob? Yes, it is. PD, how about you? Well, my latest is called A New Man. I got the paperbacks, yay! Oh, nice. And my goal for this story was to um, tell a medical drama and also work in a marriage of convenience, which goes with the medical drama, and to take a man who's got some traits who are, that's not real um, traditional for a romance um, main character and to make him sympathetic. Um, Chad starts out as a very sweet person with a couple of medical issues that he thinks are minor. He thinks he's got chronic allergies. And he's got something very, very different that is causing havoc in almost all parts of his life. And when he finds out he needs surgery, um, he's been kind of getting friendlier and finding out more about his sexuality with his roommate, Warren, who is a different kind of very nice guy much feistier. And in order to get him safely through the surgery and let him die if he needs to, which is another thing that seems like a real hard thing to pull over, um, but Warren signed, they, they get married so that Warren would be the de decision maker because Chad's family is extremely unreliable. Um, they've already demonstrated their unreliability and Chad's terrified. So I send them on an emotional, hormonal journey after the surgery, and I just beat these characters up. I make them work for that happily ever after. Uh, it sounds like you've really thrown a, a bunch at them. Oh, my goodness. Um, uh, yeah, I, I made their lives a little difficult. That's okay. Uh, imagine if your husband turns into a 15-year-old. <laughs> oh, my. I, I, yeah, I'm, so I'm so intrigued. Skylar, how about you? 
Um, well, my newest release is out on Friday, so it's not actually out yet, but uh, it's called Here For You, and it's a first book in a series. I wanted to write, well, actually, this book was a gift. I really wasn't intending to write it, to be honest, and it was one of those books that uh, just came out of nowhere, and I followed my muse, and it just poured out of me, so hopefully uh, that works, and uh, it, it has a lot of spoilers, so it's hard to talk about, but basically... I wanted to write a book about some roommates who lived together at a time in their life where, you know, they didn't really know exactly how they'd get there, but they each had dreams of what they would become. They're sort of in their 20s and struggling and trying to make sense of their past and trying to make sense of their future and relying on each other as family because their own families are not that um, much in their lives. So it, each roommate hopefully will get his story, but the first story revolves around one of the roommates and um, unfortunately when things go wrong and how they react to that as well. Very good. So out on Friday, so that's yeah. good to know. So um, Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up for us. Big thank you to Jacob Flores, PD Singer, and Skylar Cates for being here with me tonight. Uh, thank you guys for letting me torment you with all of these random questions. I wanted to let all of our viewers know that we are going to be giving away a paperback copy uh, from each of these authors. All you have to do is leave a comment in the comment box below and in a couple weeks after this video has aired we will come back and give, do a giveaway for three paperbacks, one from each author. So thank you guys very much and we will talk to you soon. Thank you, Poppy. Thank you. Everybody wave goodbye. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys. We'll Thank see you, you soon.